She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open, and when she went into the room she had such a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today, and at other times I like being with grandmother so much, she called out. Good morning, but received no answer. So she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her cap pulled far over her face and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, she said, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my child, was the reply. But grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said, the better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what large hands you have, the better to hug you with. Oh, but grandmother, what a terrible big mouth you have, the better to eat you with. And scarcely had the wolf said this, than with one bound he was out of bed and swallowed up Red Riding Hood. When the wolf had appeased his appetite, he lay down again in the bed. He fell asleep and began to snore very loud. The huntsman was just passing the house, and thought to himself, How the old woman is snoring! I must see if she wants anything. So he went into the room, and when he came to the bed, he saw that the wolf was laying in it. Do I find thee here, thou old sinner, said he. I have long sought thee. Then, just as he was going to fire at him, it occurred to him that the wolf might have devoured the grandmother, and that she might still be saved. So he did not fire, but took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the stomach of the sleeping wolf. When he had made two snips, he saw the little red riding hood shining. And then he made two snips more, and the little girl sprang out, crying, Ah, how front frightened I have been! How dark it was inside the wolf, and after the aged grandmother came out alive also, but scarcely able to breathe. Red Riding Hood, however, quickly fetched great stones with which they filled the wolf's body, and when he woke, he wanted to run away. But the stones were so heavy, he fell down at once and fell dead. Then all three were delighted. The huntsman drew off the wolf's skin and went home with it. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine which Red Riding Hood had brought and revived. But Red Riding Hood thought to herself, As long as I live, I will never by myself leave the path to run into the wood, when my mother has forbidden me to do so. It is also related that once, when Red Riding Hood was again taking cakes to the old grandmother, another wolf spoke to her, and tried to entice her from the path. Red Riding Hood, however, was on her guard and went straight forward on her way, and told her grandmother that she had met the wolf, and that he had said good morning to her, but with such a wicked look in his eyes, that if they had not been on the public road, she was certain he would have eaten her up. Well, said the grandmother, will shut the door that he may not come in. Soon afterwards, the wolf knocked and cried, Open the door, grandmother, I am Little Red Riding Hood, and I am fetching you some cakes. But they did not speak or open the door, so the gray beard stole twice or thrice around the house and at last jumped on the roof, intending to wait until Red Riding Hood went home in the evening, and then to steal her after and devour her in the darkness. But the grandmother saw what was in his thoughts. In front of the house was a great stone trow. So she said to the child, Take the pail, Red Riding Hood. I made some sausages yesterday, so carry the water in which I boiled them to the trough. Red Riding Hood carried until the great throw was full. Then the smell of the sausages reached the wolf, and he sniffed and peeped down. When at last stretched out his neck so far that he could no longer keep his footing and began to slip, and slipped down from the roof straight into the great trough and was drowned. But Red Riding Hood joyously home and never did anything to harm anyone. The end.